Hey there, MSPs and IT pros. Welcome to the Rocket MSP podcast, where we ask the tough questions. Today, my guest is David Sohn from Helped, an onshore help desk provider for MSPs. Now, if you're new to the show, here's how it works. We're going to start with questions for us to get to know my guest and their services better. After Q&A, we'll do show and tell, the segment where we get a demo of their product or service and get to ask more questions about how it works. So without further ado, let's bring on my guest. Hey there. How's it going, David? Hey, it's going well. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Man. So uh, you, you've got um, a product or a service, I should say, that is is always, I'm going to call it elusive to MSPs. Mm. And, and the mm. reason I say it is because there are, I don't want to say there are many outsourced help desk providers out there because there really aren't. I feel like you could count on one or two hands the number of providers for this type of service. And we don't need to name names. We don't need to point fingers or do any thought of that. But um, what I do want to talk about is what on earth uh, makes you different? Because the one thing that many MSPs uh, can attest is that when they... How, how do I say this without, without cribbing all over you? Uh, <laughs> you <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. You know, we when, hear it regularly. It's very tough. It is. When, yeah. when yeah. MSPs go to outsource their services, um, there's, there's a market quality draw, you know, because now, now it's people that are not employed by that MSP. They don't have skin in the game. Uh, a lot of times they are underpaid workers and and even worse worse because underpaid is they are in a different country so their their expectations uh for you know courteousness and uh customer satisfaction and all that are just different in different cultures right so how how can we as msps trust that Here's another outsourced help desk provider. All, all that long winded to say, how can we trust that help is going to provide service that doesn't suck to our clients? So the thing that you asked early was what makes us different? And I think my answer to that is our desire to be different. You know, when Matt, my partner and I entered this world, um, we really just wanted to look at what was out there and and see what we could do to, to be different. And all of the things that you were talking about were things that, you know, we've either experienced firsthand as I ran a tech support organization or that we're hearing from, from all of our clients on a regular basis. Um, it is really difficult to, to, to give up control and to, to have people facing your customers that, you know, aren't a part of your team that, that aren't somebody you can kind of go over and tap on the shoulder and say, Hey, what's going on here? Um, good news is. And, you know, we're tapping shoulders for you. Okay. So, yeah. so let's, let's dive in a little bit. Uh, let's actually, before we dive in, let's, let's take a step back. So I kind of, yeah. I kind of came in with guns blazing, but why don't we, why don't we get to know you a little bit better? Um, you, you, you this is a newer venture for you. So what, have, what did you mm -hmm. do before help? Yeah. Um, so. Right before this, I actually ran a global technical support organization for a company that sold network hardware. Um, you know, we were doing fiber optics, patch panels, keypoint, things like that. Um, in that, I had a team of folks in the US, I had a team of folks in the UK, and I was trying to use a service to help me cover a handful of hours that I wasn't able to cover. And so I went through all of the same things that people who are looking for an outsourced solution went through. Um, you know, I, I saw the offshore options. Um, I saw the, the options of, of folks that were, you know, work from home that were, you know, maybe pausing the TV and picking up the phone. Um, I saw all those things, you know, as a, as a tech leader. Um, and then I said, we got to be different. We got to do this differently. And so I know I'm, I'm, I said that already, caught me in the middle of my old spiel thing, but but our goal is really to be, be different and satisfy my requirements. 
you know, as I was doing that, you know, role, I had a ton of requirements that I'm now trying to set out to, to satisfy. If that answers the question. Let's see. Uh, so what made you decide to start help? I mean, there are other providers out there. So why help? Yeah. Yeah. No. So we, um, you know, we came from that company that was selling the, the network hardware. And my first thought as we left that organization, um, on good terms, luckily it was purchased um, by a massive conglomerate. Things went well. And uh, we said, hey, maybe it's time to, to try our own thing. Um, but when we did try our own thing, we thought, you know, we need to fill this need out there for, for you know, technical product support. It's outsourced, blah, blah, blah. That was in you know, August of last year. After a couple of weeks, you know, I reached out to some of my guys that were, you know, systems engineers at Juniper and, and doing all these really cool, like optical engineering things. And one of them said, hey, you got to talk to my brother-in-law. And I said, sure, why not? You know, this, this is great, good lead. And uh, the brother-in-law was, was an MSP. And so we said, wow, okay, we know how to do that. You know, how can we help? Uh, and so we started helping them out. Uh, a couple of weeks later, another MSP came up to us and said, whoa, you guys are, you know, a breath of fresh air. It seems like you're doing things different. And then another one and another one, another one. And now, you know, we don't do a lot of product support anymore, but we do deal with uh, MSPs. Yeah. All right. So yeah. you've, you've been in business for about a year now. Yeah. August of 2022 is when we were official. How many employees do you have now? So we are at 12 total. Yeah. And are they all like W2 employees or are any of them uh, 1099? So all of our agents are W2 employees. They are remote, but they're all here in the U.S., um, U.S. based, U.S. born, uh, which, you know, is a huge thing now with all the cybersecurity requirements, you know, the CMMCs, the mm -hmm. ITARs, things, things of that nature. And I don't see anything wrong with doing uh, a hybrid work from home type of environment, mm -hmm. especially, um, especially to me, man. Like, I think the thing that's, that's going to be more critical is what are you doing to keep your employees happy and healthy? Because, you know, for me, for example, I am a fully remote employee for an MSP, but you know, every week I've got a couple of meetings I go to on zoom or, or teams or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I've, I've got Slack that I get to chat with them. All throughout the day, you know, we've got the water cooler in there so that way we can uh, shoot the breeze about whatever we want to complain about for the moment. Um, you know, so so what are you doing to keep your your employees engaged with each other? Because I assume that's going to help reduce employee chart. Yes, um, absolutely right. So we have the internal Slack as well. Um, we use that and. Frankly, we're, we're silly, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the silly sort myself. Um, but I think we've built up kind of this, you know, silliness bond. Um, we do a uh, frog Friday. So every Friday, uh, I, instead of re reacting to things with normal emojis, I start to react to things with frog emojis. Um, and we just, we're constantly communicating with each other. Um, you know, because we are manning a queue, uh, if somebody says, Hey, I gotta go to the bathroom, walk the dog, do whatever it is. You know, maybe they'll pop in and say, Hey, I'll be back in 10 or whatever it is. And, you know, that constant communication kind of keeps us, you know, in the same room, but not in the same room. Cool. And, you know, your other question about how do we keep people happy? I mean, that is really tough. Um, I know you came out guns blazing, um, but it is something that that's constantly on our mind. You know, we're hiring the same types of agents that, that you're going to be able to find as an MSP. Um, I think one of the things that we, offer to, to our agents, um, is the, the variety, you know, we use uh, many different client tools on a daily basis. Um, we're kind of like a, like a crash course, you know, you, you come in and say, Hey, I want to be a level one for, for an MSP. I've got experience, you know, enterprise IT. I've got experience with this other thing. I've got these certs. I'm, I'm ready to go. And you come in to help and you see many different perspectives. You see a bunch of different tools. You see a bunch of different, you know, ways of dealing with things. 
Um, and I think that that really is, is a challenge and um, all of our agents are, are up for that challenge. Uh, but I think it's something that really engages them. Cool. So what do you offer MSPs that no other company is offering? Good question. Uh, so, you know, one of the things that we do is we do a pod system. Um, so aside from all of the, you know, the table stakes, as I like to call them, being on shore, being 24 seven, um, we do a pod system. And so the way that it works is that depending on your size, you'll get a pod of five agents. Those five agents will include a team lead. That team lead is kind of like an IT service manager extension. Those four agents, those people are available. They're taking the tickets. They're internally escalating to the team lead before they're externally escalating to you. One of the things that we heard over and over again was, oh, you know, I'm working with this other provider. And if it's not in the documentation, they, they just pawned it. You know, they send it right to us. It's super frustrating. I, you know, what are we using them for type player? And one of the ways that we kind of tell our agents to approach that is to say, hey, if you don't know what to do, we've got direct lines of communication. Maybe ping the, 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 the stakeholder. Hey, uh, you know, Steve, uh, this local admin password here in IT glue doesn't look like it's right. You know, what do you think? And you go, oh, you know, I changed it the other day. Here it is, right? And then, then we'll go and we'll take care of whatever it was that needed to be taken care of instead of, well, you know, well, I'm a password, not what we're going to read something not right. Send it over. Here's an escalation. Um, so I think that that's unique. It's, I got torched a, a couple of days ago for using the term, uh, partnership, uh, on Reddit. Somebody didn't like the fact that I said partnership. They said, you're not taking financial obligation, blah, blah, blah. But, but what we really believe in is that partnership. You're, you're hiring the team of agents. You're hiring the pod the same way that you would maybe hire one single person. You're training that pod. You're getting the continuity of support because it's the same people in that pod. Customers are going to get the same people over and over again. You're going to get to know the team lead. You're going to get to know the other agents. You know, we're really just trying to be fractional, be a partner. I don't know. Sorry, I'm rambling, Steve, but uh, I think that that's what makes us a little bit different. Okay. Now, you said your your pods uh, typically consist of like five people. So based on, you know, some, some basic math, you've got 12 in place. <laughs> So it sounds yep. like you've got two pods. Yep. We are, yes, we, uh, we have this focus of the pod system to allow us to cookie cutter. What we want to be able to do is go on this show and have everybody listen to me and say, all right, that guy doesn't seem too bad and sign up tomorrow. If a hundred people signed up tomorrow, that would be way too much for, you know, two pods, 12 people, whatever it is. But. One of the things that we're really good at is bringing in the right talent, is, uh, you know, attracting the right people and then putting them into the pot. So we can cookie cutter those pots. hundred people sign up tomorrow. You know, we're going to create another five, 10, 15 pots, however many pods we need to support that. And we can do that pretty quickly. All right. Uh, do you have any growth plans for the next 12 to 18 months? I'll be like, you know, let's get new clients. It's perfect. Well, our growth plans are let's get new clients with more sales and marketing. Um, so I think that that's one of our main focuses right now is to start going to, you know, a show a month instead of a show a quarter. Um, you know, we've been doing a show a quarter. Uh, we want to do a little bit more with, uh, you know, the sales and marketing effort to, to get new clients. The, the thing that I'm thinking about and the thing that I think you kind of alluded to a little bit earlier is you know, this balance, this, this hybrid work-life balance, this, uh, sorry, hybrid remote work and work-life balance. Um, and I think that our future is something where, you know, we're going to offer people wildly flexible schedules. You know, um, we want to be able to bring somebody in and say, hey, you know, when do you want to work? When's going to work best for you? And then they can say, ah, you know, I, I take my kids to school at three o'clock uh, or I guess I pick them up at three o'clock. I, I drop them off at nine. You know, I want to work from 10 to 2.30. Uh, we want to be able to offer that to, to our agents. And we want to be able to make it something that um, is incredibly flexible. Um, and, you know, we're building a platform towards that. Uh, so I don't think that's 18 months. I think that's maybe 36 months from now. All right. Now, how, how do MSPs, um, how do MSPs, 
have a conversation with you. Like, let's say the, the support that your techs are providing our clients is not meeting our standard. How, how do we have that conversation with you? Yeah. Um, and I know that all the people that are thinking, oh, how's this going to scale or going to say something, but I want them to send me an email and send me a text, send me a, a whatever, you know, reach out, give me a call. Um, you know, I was in some of the sh same shoes, you know, I would want to know right away that my agents aren't performing as expected. Um, if it turns out that it's a training issue, that's absolutely on me and something that we'll need to fix. If it turns out it's something else, then I want to know exactly what it is. So I'm, you know, being transparent here, but we've had that happen a handful of times. You know, there's some engagement that didn't go the way that it should have. And we'll get an email and we'll get a call. We'll get a text. Hey, you know, what happened on this one? And, you know, my first thought is let's find out all sides of the story and, and let's really root cause analysis this and let's figure out how to get better. Some of our clients are, are happy to hear that we take that approach. Some of our clients might say, ah, strike one, you know, who knows? Um, but our goal is to be different. Our goal is to be better, improve every day. What kind of SLAs do you provide? Hmm. Our average pickup time on phone calls is 44 seconds. We will set the queue to about two minutes. So our goal is to pick up 98% of all calls within two minutes. Um, when it comes to tickets, our goal is 30 minutes. Um, but reality is that Mondays and Tuesdays get crazy. Um, so I would say if I had to put something down on paper, I'd say an hour. Your SLAs have any guarantees? You know, our SLAs don't have any guarantees. Uh, it's a good, good thought. And I don't know how we would do it. Uh, you know, we all live in this world. Uh, something happens, M365, you know, craps the bed, pardon the French, uh, and we get 30 calls and, you know, 25 tickets based on those calls and it just goes haywire. And, um, you know, that's an unforeseen circumstance. And I don't know how we would do a guarantee, um, but, you know, if that was a requirement of, of maybe a contract or a customer of, of ours, we could figure something out. Now, normally I like to ask, you know, what, what problems are solved for the MSPs, but I'd like to think this one's pretty, pretty simple. You, you're going to provide support when the MSP can't or doesn't want to. Mm -hmm. So. How does your product help MSPs improve their service develop deliverability? Mm -hmm. So I think that beyond what you just mentioned, you no, know, um, us picking up the phone or us jumping on the ticket, you know, maybe sooner or in in lieu of our clients. Um, I think that one of the other things that it does is it really adds a, a buffer, um, almost like a shield between you know, us and the technicians that, that might work for our MSD client. Um, imagining that you say to somebody, Hey, you know, you're going to go on call this week and you know, you're going to take all of the calls and maybe you're level two, maybe you're something different. And you're like, ah, man, I, I hate taking the help desk type stuff. I hate taking that, you know, my calendar looks funny type call. Imagine instead, if you said, Hey, you're on call, but you know, you, you've actually got the help guys, you've got the, the team in front of you and you're only going to get the escalations. And, and in that, that buffer, uh, I think that we help improve the, the service deliverability because we almost de-stress things a little bit, you know, uh, we're taking it on. We're, we're the frontline defense and we're allowing our clients to change the way that they operate and, and do all the things that they kind of wanted to do for their team, but might not have been able to because phones were ringing off the hooks or, you know, the tickets were coming in. Hey, my, you know, calendar looks funny. My, I think I use that one already. Hey, my keyboard's typing, so things like that. You know, we can kind of offload that. Now, what, what products do you guys integrate with? Because I would like to think that you, you're going to have to integrate with an MSP's TSA and you might mm -hmm. be, uh, connecting to their RMM as well. Yeah. So this one's going to be a huge curveball, And I probably should have said this earlier when you asked what makes us different. 
we have a platform that allows our agents to click into our clients' group of tools the moment that they start an engagement. So instead of it being something where they're working out of Autotask or they're working out of Connect providers or they're working out of some PSA, call comes in from client A, they go down the left side of their, their screen, they click client A, it expands, it shows, you know, Autotask, it shows, you know, uh, whatever the PSA tool is, it shows the RMM, maybe it shows Proofpoint, you know, Barracuda, it shows all of the different tools that, that our clients are using. And it informs their steps because, you know, maybe a call comes in or an email comes in and says, Hey, I just got this funny looking email. Okay. Great. Click right into that group of tools. Proof point. Awesome. All right. Let me go in there. You know, maybe add that one to the block senders list or, or make some action based on the tools that I know that are available to me. A lot of our competitors are going to say, you have to use this tool. You have to integrate with this thing or you have to use our own ticketing system or some, you know, level of a requirement. And our goal is, again, to be different, to be an addition to your team, you know, like hiring one technician, but instead of one, you're getting that pop. You know, I'll say that over and over again, because I think it's really important to think about us like, like, like a part of your team, fractional tech support, fractional, you know, help desk, um, as opposed to it being something where you're going to send a ticket, like a boomerang out to, you know, some call center, uh, they're going to take it with a pot of however many hundreds of people that are sitting in cubicles. They're going to try to work it. They're not going to find the right thing in the IT glue, the hoodoo, the whatever. And then they're going to send it back to you. You know, that's, that's what we're trying to avoid. And I think the fractional pod system thing does that. Excellent. Now, how do you help MSPs get, get your service up and running? Cause there's, there's gotta be yeah. some like onboarding and set up stuff, right? Yeah. Because we use uh, that platform, it's wildly simple. You know, we're not needing tasks, right? API keys, we're not needing tasks for, you know, different things to allow us to integrate within your systems. Um, the, the process I say takes two hours. It really takes 30 minutes on a first call. That first call is asking questions that maybe you're not even thinking about. Like, what do you want the ringtone to sound like when, you know, you're, I don't know, Client calling in, um, you know, how do you want, uh, the audio while connecting this out? Um, you know, what do you want it to do, you know, in the phone system beyond, you know, just the normal stuff. Uh, and then it's the stuff that you are thinking about, like, you know, what do we do in an escalation? You know, how do you want us to escalate the, you know, during what times do we call this person? During what times do we call that person? Um, and then after those first handful of questions in that 30 minute session, uh, we'll create you know, a phone number. It's a, it's a private number. It's the number that you're going to forward to out of your system. That's going to hit our system. Uh, we'll create a distribution list for emails, for the licenses and activation tools. Um, and then we'll break and we'll set up something, you know, day later, you know, a couple days later, however fast it is that we can you know, kind of put everything in motion. And then we'll do another call where we test the systems. And while we're testing the systems, we start to look at the nuance. You know, everybody has their own business process. Um, they use, you know, good practices, but sometimes people will, you know, resolve a ticket and sometimes people will complete a ticket and sometimes people will, you know, resolve a ticket by using the resolved, you know, dash pending something, you know, pending accounting, pending some other thing. And we need to know all of those things. And so on that second call, it's where I'm really, you know, taking notes or we're, we're taking notes into to your system that we then can present to our agents. So. Call comes in. I've got this, we call it our, it's our floating knowledge base. It's just a knowledge base that pops up with a bunch of cards that are specific to you as business. It'll have a, a, a card that says call and ticket rules. In that call and ticket rules card, there might be something that says complete tickets. You know, use the complete status on completed tickets. You know, track your time in this field, do this and that, and whatever it is that, that you've kind of defined. That two hour period is over. We're off to the races. We're picking up the phone. We're providing, you know, professional, friendly, you know, uh, good people. You know, we give them the warm and fuzzies. Uh, and we take all of our skills and things that we're seeing on a regular basis and apply them to, to your clients, to your customers. Sometimes there's things that are going to come up that you have no idea how to deal with, but we're all about that open line of communication. You know, if you have Slack, if you have teams, whatever it is, we will ping you right away. Hey, Steve, what's going on with this one? You know, like the local admin password 
example from earlier. Hey, uh, you know, I just tried this three times and it's not working. You go, ah, I just changed this thing. Try this other thing. We go back, try it, knock the ticket out instead of it being this game of tenants back and forth. I'm on a ramble. Uh, I feel like I just kept going. Sorry, Steve. What? <laughs> no, right. I, I, I'm okay with that, man. So uh, let's let's talk about our data for a little bit. Yeah. So um, first of all, what countries do you support MSPs for? Um, right now, just in the U.S. Um, we've had a couple of people ask us out of the country, but uh, right now, just U.S. MSPs. And is all of our data stored here in the U.S.? Uh, yeah, there's really no time that we're storing any of your data. We're we're accessing the data through our platform, um, but we're not storing anything unless I'm missing the the question. No, so um, I'm I'm just thinking about anything from uh, you know, like a list of our clients or our information, uh, you know. I'm I'm not worried so much about like the IT glue and all that type of stuff yet. I'm I'm more worried about you know we're you know, I I assume you've got a list of our clients somewhere because you need to know who you're providing support to. And where so is that store? So outside of the IT glues and the kudos, um, we do have that floating knowledge base article, uh, and in most uh, cases, almost all cases. They're non-specific. You know, it'll use maybe the client name, uh, but then it'll have rules that are specific to that client. Um, that's a, a cloud-hosted solution. Uh, I'll have to look where they are, uh, but that's the only place where we might have a, a contact name that isn't you in our system versus yours. Oh. While, while we may not have a bunch of data on your systems, we do have to make sure that you're able to stay up and running. So what kind of uh, redundancy, disaster recovery plans, all, all that good stuff do you have in place? So we, um, this now, now these are the hard balls. This is good stuff. Um, so, you know, we use the, the cloud-based solutions um, and we are in multiple remote locations. Um, you know, if something happened to, to me or, or my internet, um, all of our agents are on completely different, uh, you know, internet providers. Um, we do use a, like a SASE solution. We use Primer 81. I don't know. Shout them out. Um, if that ever went down and we were unable to, you know, access some of the things that were whitelisted um, to be able to access, you know, that would be something that we would send out a message. And as a part of our, you know, recovery plan, it, it's really just a matter of communication. And do you guys have, um, do you guys have like a, I don't know, policies in place today when it comes to uh, disaster plan, recovery plan, and all that good stuff for, for when something were to ever go down? You know, I, I can't say that we have something formalized. Um, we follow guidelines, you know, it's something that we've looked into because it is something that we've been asked. Um, when it comes to things like the, you know, the SOC 2 and the NIST compliance, you know, that's where I think I can get a little bit deeper into, you know, how we're focused on achieving those things or allowing our clients to achieve those things, frankly. Um, when it comes to disaster recovery, um, I don't know, maybe it is fly by the seat of our pants, but it will try to do it in a way that uh, doesn't impact too much. So let's talk about compliance for a little bit. Mm -hmm. So there's, I, I'm going to call it two different types of compliance that you probably need to worry about. One would be like the internal compliance, whether that's SOC 2 or ISO 27001, et cetera. And then two is external compliance. So that way you can help us with our compliance. So that might be signing a HIPAA B or yes. any number of things, right? So. So talk to me about compliance. Feel free to give me just a high level overview to start. <laughs> um, so, so yes, we do. We have signed the BAA um, compliance. We have also helped our, our clients through SOC 2 audits. 
we are a extension of your team. If you say, I need all of my technicians to watch this video and check this box and acknowledge these things, you know, we just did a SOC 2 audit recently, actually. So that's what it was, you know, awareness and policies and, you know, a handful of documents where they were saying, yeah, I agree with this. And, you know, we watched a video, we did all that stuff. So we do that as a part of your team. If you say, hey, I'm doing a SOC 2, great. You know, what do we need to fill out? You know, we'll, we'll, we'll do the training. We'll, we'll be, you know, fractional and be a part of your team. All right. <laughs> so that wasn't high level. About, Sorry, Steve. No, it's okay. So how about, um, let's, let's dig a little deeper into compliance now. Are you guys yeah. as, as a company, as a whole, not necessarily you, um, are you guys able to work within like the NIST CSF or CIS controls or anything like that when it comes to our clients? So if there are specific things that we would need to adhere to, um, the answer would be yes. Um, right now we've got a couple of clients that are working with hospital systems. Uh, we've got a couple of clients that are working with, you know, stock trading, uh, platforms and, and companies like that. And they basically define what we need to do and we're happy to do it. Um, we are more reactive in that regard. You know, Hey, I need you to get to, you know, do this training or I need you to, to fill this form. I need you to take this measure. Okay. We'll do that. Um, it's tough to be proactive with so many clients. I know earlier you said you'll sign a BAA. Um, mm -hmm. what, what do you have in place internally? Uh, because I know, for example, if you're able to access our client machine, then I think that means you also have to meet like internal HIPAA compliance and that type of stuff. Is that accurate? Okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and I don't okay. want to say the wrong thing here. Um, okay. you know, we're, that's fair. We, when we signed it, there was a list of things that we needed to do and, you know, we, we, coach the agents and we made sure that that was, you know, adopted in our best practices. Um, you know, it, I don't, I don't think that we're without blame if something happens because we are doing remote connections. We are, you know, dealing with the customers at the desktops and seeing some of the stuff that's on their screen. Uh, but it's still all in your environment as opposed to it being something where you're integrating with, with our tool, which, you know, API is a backdoor into something. Um, you know, if, if we're APIing into your ticketing system, then that means that we have access to all of your ticketing system. If we're just in your ticketing system, then we have access to your ticketing system while you allow us to have that access to the ticketing system. And it's not in a, you know, automated fashion, right? You know, an agent looking at something um, is a lot different than a database being able to store all of those different records. Um, that's another thing that, that, that we have, you know, we use, we use Keeper as our password manager and we have controls in place that, you know, allow us to turn agents off immediately. Um, if somebody said, Hey, you know, I'm going to this other job or you guys smell funny or whatever it is, uh, we click a couple buttons and they no longer have access to anything, you know, helped internal systems and all of our clients external system, I guess, clients internal system. Good. And that, and that honestly kind of helps us segue right into cybersecurity. So yeah. Um, <laughs> That's, that's wonderful. Uh, the interesting thing is, you know, normally I'm asking, do you support multi-factor authentication and single sign-on, but you don't really have that type of platform. I mean, you might, you might support it internally, but we yeah. as an MSP, is there even a portal for us to log into? You know, there are analytics, um, but that's it right now. Um, we send out our reporting every month that is just a screenshot of that dashboard. Um, the analytics is where you could go in and see, you know, the call times, the number of ticket engagements, the averages, you know, kind of see if there are any outliers or things that, that throw you off, but there's really not somewhere that you can go in and, you know, uh, you know, see all the tickets that are with us because that's your system. Um, there's not somewhere where you can go in and, you know, see who looked at that last, you know, IT glue document. Because that's your system, right? You'd go into IT Glue and you'd look at the you know audit logs and you'd see, oh, you know, David with his you know David at Get Helps uh, you know address looked at this document. 
um, you know, it's a, it's tough. It's a weird, you know, like kind of a, a middle ground place to be, you know, um, your controls are our controls. Very good. Now I'm going to hop into my, uh, Q and a form submissions here. Cool. Uh, because I know I received a few submissions. Hey. Um, so someone asked, I mean, we already talked about it a little bit. What's your SLA for response time and resolution times? Uh, that was, uh, two minutes, I think for phone calls and then one hour for our tickets. Yep. Yeah. Um, response times, one hour resolution times. That's tougher. You know, four hours is our goal, sure. but you guys know, uh, some things take a lot longer. Um, we have a couple clients that have us on bright gauge, um, you know, where we can look in and, you know, see exactly what the tickets that we're affecting are, are doing, you know, their percentage of response times under the SLA, over the SLA, things like that. How will you be able to incorporate an organization's SOPs efficiently and effectively at the L1 level to avoid the frustration many feel when reaching a typical outsourced help service desk? Oh my gosh, so that was awesome. Um, whoever asked that question, thank you. Uh, you know, that, that knowledge base, uh, the floating knowledge base article, as I mentioned, uh, it earlier and, um, that's really something that's front and center where our agents, you know, click on the left side and they go into the group tools, you know, so the client's tools. And then on the right side, there's a, there's a floating knowledge base that says, here's the call and ticket rules. That's where the SOPs go. Hey, if, you know, this VIP calls in you know, to that level of green there, do these things, you know, um, resolve a ticket this way, you know, check your time this way, um, you know, do the things our way versus doing the things your way. And that's all right there for our agents and the knowledge base articles. Um, and frankly, and I'm, you know, going full transparency again, uh, we've had a couple of times where we track the time the wrong way. And, um, that comes down to that interaction of saying, Hey guys, you're tracking the time the wrong way. Okay train the team, coach them up a little bit. And then the next time they don't do it. It's a partnership. It's a, it's an open line of communication. It's not going to be perfect. You know, the first couple of weeks, we're going to learn those SOPs. We're going to you know install them. We're going to have them in our articles. And then we're going to make a mistake just like any other level, level one. When it happens though, you're kind of training up a whole team of people as opposed to that one person. So there's some benefit there. So on your website, you actually have plans of pricing right there. We don't have to go through any, um, <laughs> any hoops or, or anything. So I'm going to beat you up a little bit on your pricing because totally. I think I think at, at first glance it seems reasonable because sixteen fifty a month, one thousand six hundred and fifty U.S. dollars per month is the starting point. I think where where this is going to become a little frustrating for MSPs who maybe don't understand how outsourcing a help desk works is you're giving us our limits of, you know, this includes 300 minutes. So that's five dollars and 50 cents per minute, uh, which the math works out to be $330 an hour. Now, I don't know any MSP that is charging $330 an hour, at least for, uh, in hours, uh, you know, the nine to five typical business hours, right? Yeah. How, what, what were you smoking when you put together your pricing? So it's yeah, the good stuff. We're here in California. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> that explains the, everything. The, <laughs> yes. Yes. So to, you know, address the, the question about $5 and 50 cents a minute, uh, you nailed it already. You know, for overflow, for, for after hours, um, that's where it's a little bit more advantageous. You know, you don't need to hire a level one person. You don't need to pay your guys a little bit more to be on call and add a little bit of stress to them. You just install us and we're butt and seats to take the calls. $5.50 a minute is insane. Our average call time is about eight minutes. So eight times five is 40 bucks. 40 bucks a ticket isn't insane. Uh, and sometimes we've got clients and I don't know, I'm just going to, you know, plug my ears in case you guys do this. We have clients that charge minimums that are 
well beyond you know, 15 minutes. Sometimes it's a 30 minute minimum if you call after hours. Sometimes it's an hour minimum if you call after hours. Call comes into us, we're going to charge you to the second. It's a four minute call because somebody calls and says, my keyboard is going slow. Okay, try this, do a restart. Oh, it worked, great. Done. You invoice them 30 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it is. So you're actually potentially making some money on top of that. The other side of that and the, uh, <laughs> the complete... I don't know, 180. So yes, we are transparent with our pricing-ish. One of the other things that we do is we do offer MSP pricing because we're quick to adapt. I mean, this is our our motto. When we got into this MSP world, people started looking at pricing and saying, whoa, it's that much per minute. But what happens if you've got the CEO on the line and they need to restart their computer four times and it takes you 30 minutes? You know, I'm not paying that much for that engagement. Or conversely, what about if there's you know, a bunch of alert calls that, that come in and, you know, you're doing tickets. Like, how are you going to charge me if, a, if an alert comes in and all your guys have to do is press one? Is that a quarter of a ticket? Is that a full ticket? Is that a whatever? And so what we settled on was a per user pricing for MSPs. And again, full transparency, even though it's not on our website, charge $24 per user per month. That's all US. It's 24 seven. That's, you know, people on the front line that are taking those inbound engagements taking care of the customer, gone from there. So 24 per user per month. Mm -hmm. Is there a minimum number of users? No. So, so again, trying to be a little bit different. We don't do minimums. We don't do contracts. We don't do, you know, all the crazy stuff that you hear about from other companies out there with their three-year deals. And we want to prove ourselves literally every day. You called me and said, I've got five users. And actually, I had a call with somebody yesterday that said, I've got a bunch of users, but I want to guinea pig you guys with five users. Okay, let us show you what we can do. Let's see if the partnership works. And if it does, we'll keep going. Give us those other users. With the $24 a user, you can see it now. You know, when you charge an you know, X amount of dollars per user per month, you got, you know, your licensing, you've got your time, you've got these whatever else things. And now you've got something that's clear and defines for your help desk. That's what we wanted to be able to offer. And that's what we do offer to our MSP clients. So for that $24, what are we getting? Because um, Mm -hmm. as a, as an outsourced help desk, you know, that, you know, time is not in. So Mm -hmm. we're not, we're not getting unlimited all you can eat resources for $24 per user. Right. Right. So you are getting more on that inbound engagement. So somebody calls in and says, Hey, my, you know, outlook is looking funny. I keep saying that, but it's an inbound engagement. So, um, ticket comes in, you know, it turns out that it's urgent. We're going to grab it. Call comes in, you know, it's urgent. We're grabbing it. Um, there are some limitations that I'll send out to, to you to maybe send to others, or, you know, I think we have a handful of them on our website under our FAQs. You're right. It can't be unlimited. If you say, I'm going to do a user onboarding and it's a four hour process, then we'll look at that as maybe project rate type thing, um, which we do offer, you know, tier two and tier three resources as a project rate. If you're using our per user service. All right. And then, um, I, I think I'm still a little fuzzy on what you mean by your so what are we getting for that $24 per year? <laughs> yes. Uh, so let me see if I've got a list. Uh, um, you know, I, I think I it's guess, easy to say. I, I, I guess let me, let me rephrase. So um, with another help desk and knock service provider, um, mm-hmm. they'll say that on average, uh, each, each user creates uh, what we'll call it two tickets a month and each mm-hmm. of those tickets is uh 15 minutes worth of work so each user mm-hmm. is worth 30 minutes worth of, of support and mm-hmm. basically they'll they'll say okay you're you're paying for 100 users that means you get you know 30 minutes times 100 so now you've got mm-hmm. 3000 minutes if i've done my math correctly available mm-hmm. to your msp in one big is that kind of what you're doing as well when they're doing the per user thing? 
So yes, we are calculating it in a way that makes it equitable for hopefully everybody. Um, we are hoping that it's going to be on average that, you know, two to three engagements per user per month. What we're also doing is, um, well, I guess I've got the list up now. So, you know, we're, we're doing, uh, Microsoft 365 admin, you know, password resets, you know, forwarding, things like that. We're taking care of hardware issues, including printers, you know, computers being slow. Uh, we're doing application support. So, you know, if you're in a vertical where it's engineering or manufacturing or something like that, and you've got some, some software that your clients are relying on, you know, we can take a look into things that might be necessary there. Um, we do the VPN troubleshooting, the, you know, the Wi-Fi type stuff, shared drives, um, access control. So we're doing like the, reactive list management, um, patch management reactively. Uh, and then we're dealing with servers as well. So if an alert comes in or something needs to be rebooted or restarted, um, we'll jump on that. Um, one of the things that we have here in the, what it does not include, um, is a lot of the proactive stuff. So when we're dealing per user, it, it's hard to be proactive because we need to be able to keep that engagement time down, um, so that it makes sense for us and so that we're available for our other clients. You know, last thing we'd want to do is um, is not be available. You know, that, that's literally our goal. That makes sense. All right, so three hundred and thirty dollars an hour. It, it still sounds steep, but that also sounds, in some ways, like the smarter way to do it. Uh, and the reason I say that is because um, how nice is it to not worry about well, what if a client that I'm not paying for the MSP plan, what if they call at 11 o'clock at night and need support? It's, it's any, any client that calls, you'll take care of it. Okay. Exactly. By the minute. Hey, well, however you want to word it, right? We're, yeah. um, so do you have any customers, partners, whatever, that are, are kind of doing a hybrid of the two or... Maybe they're paying for the, the audio suite or whatever you want to call it for these three clients. And then they're, they've got a block of time for everything else. No, we don't have anybody that's doing anything hybrid right now. Um, but we're always open to that because we know how quickly things evolve for our clients. If somebody signed on a company that was going to be doing just password resets or just one element of this help desk thing and they wanted to go you know per user on them but they were previously you know doing overflow per minute it's something that we would entertain um i, I think to put things into perspective a little bit uh, we've got a, a company that that uses us uh, per minute uh, as their full front line and right now uh, they're at about 600 or 700 users however many endpoints that turns out to you know, thousand endpoints. And they also do some licensing things for other users. That company, pretty operationally mature. They've got some of their stuff in order. They're only using around 1500 minutes a month. And so you end up with something where it's like, oh, 1500 minutes divided by 60. That's a lot of, that's, that's a lot of per hour, you know, cost, but for them, they don't have three or four technicians that are sitting there, you know, waiting on the call, they've got us who are jumping on the call. Hey, me too. And, and just to give people who are, who are still listening an idea, uh, you have a 1000 minute plan for 4,000 a month. Mm -hmm. So it, the, the price per minute does go down. So at that point it's $4 a minute. And I'm sure it, uh, if somebody wanted to reach out and do a larger engagement with you. I'm sure you would do something creative on pricing to make it worth their while. Three five yeah. or three fifty a minute or something. Absolutely. At that point, um, it's just semantics, right? Exactly. And you know, we're we're always asked, like you know, like you asked, what's different? You know, what are you trying to do? You know, what are your goals? Where are you going? You know, overall, the company name is called Help. You know, we're here to help people, and we found this amazing community of MSP members that we're really trying to help. Um, if somebody comes to us and says, Hey, I've got those five users and I'm growing like, okay, let us help you. Let us jump in there. Somebody comes to us and says, Hey, I've got a need for thousands of minutes, but here's where I need to be, you know, to make it make sense to me. Okay. Like let's have that conversation. Um, 
you know, we're, we're not like a car dealership where we're not going to say no, but you know, we're definitely here to help everybody. And, um, and, and that's truly our goal. It's the name of our company. All right. Well, very good. Um, I, I like what I hear. Uh, I'm, I'm going to summarize everything and you may or may not agree with my summary, but it's, it's what I've, what I've gathered from our call. So you've, you've been around for about a year. Uh, some, some of the things you're, you're still shooting from the hip when it comes to maybe, uh, I don't want to say cybersecurity because that'll, that'll turn people off, but you, you don't necessarily have, uh, like a disaster recovery plan in place because you're, you're all like hybrid remote, everything's in the cloud. So if, if one guy's internet goes down, I mean, that sucks, but you still have 11 other guys that can fill in where he was. Um, the, the pricing seems a little high, seems a little scary, but you guys, you guys charge down in a second and you're doing things in a way that you're trying to be fair for everybody. But I can respect that. Uh, you also have MSP pricing, which is not on the website. So do you, do you sell direct or do you only work with MSPs? We only work with MSPs direct, like, uh, to IT enterprise or how do you mean? Well, um, like if, uh, Jimmy's auto repair down the road found your website and they signed up for you. No. Um, so we, <laughs> you know, we're not an MSP, um, which is also something that I'm finding is different from a lot of these other services out there. And we have no desire to become an MSP. You know, we, we call ourselves an MSP support organization. Um, it, it makes us the leper in the room sometimes because we're a vendor. Uh, and it also makes us the confidant in the room because we're dealing with most of the same issues. Uh, so it's kind of a weird place to be, but it's working so far. Very good. David, thank you so much for coming on here today, man. I, I really do appreciate it. I, I respect what you've got going on. And, uh, I think you guys should give helped a chance. You can go to the website, get helped, H E L P T dot com to, uh, learn more, to see pricing, uh, and to schedule time to chat with David or one of his other agents to get signed up. Anything else you'd like to, to impart on the audience before we take off, David? You know, one of the things I did promise that we talk about was the beard and mustache situation. Um, I, here I am. This is, this is me full beard. The profile picture, I've got just the mustache. Steve, I'm leaving it yeah. in your hands. Do you think I look better with the beard or the mustache? Whatever you say, I'm going to, I'm going to go fix it. What, let me, let me look at that. Profile picture because I honestly don't remember. Um, my my assumption is that you look better with the beard. Huh. Give me give, give me your mom. <laughs> I just have to be so slow. We the Do you I, need some support? I support Apple computers. We do. We do. Okay, so uh, since you've asked, I'm going to give you my honest opinion. Um, the, the headshot that you sent, which here, let me let me share my screen. There, boom. This is what you sent. Uh, you look like a used car salesman in the year 2005 in this picture. Oh, while, no. <laughs> while your, uh, your look today seems, uh, more raw, more genuine and mm -hmm. cool now, I, I trust this version of you much more than I trust the used car sales version. All right. Feedback received. I guess the beard will stay and I may even have to update my headshot <laughs> unless you want to buy a car. If you want to buy a car, let me know. I can, I can what, take care of you. What do you have? What are you selling? Uh, 2005 Hyundai uh, Sonata, if you, if you need that. Is that why you're driving? No, yeah, Sonatas are nice, man. 
<laughs> oh, man. No, very, very good. Well, David, thank you so much for coming on here today, man. I, I do uh, truly, I, I enjoy uh, talking to you. I enjoy your platform. I enjoy your beard. Uh, <laughs> anybody has any questions, gethelped.com. And uh, anytime you want to come on back, man, you know, we're fine. Awesome. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. Thank you, Steve's audience. Take care, everybody. All right.